Alright, welcome back to uh, my tutorial on designing a 3-bit ALU. Uh, this is a pretty long tutorial, and uh, it was in fact too long when I uh, originally recorded this, uh, and I, I drew everything out and uh, demonstrated how to do everything. So instead, I'm going to give a pretty brief overview on how it's done, and kind of show the, the final part of the first part of this video. So. I'm not going to cover any theory, but in main, we have these three equations. These are the three fundamental equations that we need to use to uh, deal with our carries for our carry look-ahead part of our ALU. Now, what I did is I took each one of these equations, and I just entered it into the circuit analyzer. So, for example, for C1, I did that here. Um, it's a very simple circuit. I probably didn't need to use the analyzer, but... I was able to put in my inputs, my output, and then enter the expression and hit enter. And then with that, I was able to build the circuit I needed. And I did that for C1, C2, and C3. And I have three of these carries because I have a three bit adder, or I have a three bit ALU, and I need to do three bit carry look aheads. So I'm going to need three carries. Uh, the last part of the small sub-circuits needed for the carry look-ahead is the actual CLA adder. So here I, I just built this. I used a diagram uh, from a textbook and just threw this together really quickly. I didn't see a need to use the circuit analyzer. And then the final step for part two is to wire up the three-bit CLA. And to do that, what I did was I started by laying down my C1 subcircuit, C2, and C3. I know I'm going to need all three of those for this 3-bit CLA when I design it. The next thing I did was put down three of the carry look-ahead adders and then my input pins, which are the CN, A2, A1, A0, and the same along here for Bs. And then I set up my output pins with my S's, which connect to the S pins on the circuit. Here A is connected. And I just did it in a very linear fashion. Now, uh, the outputs for these CLAs go to the inputs for these. So for example, this P on the first, uh, this PI, or P0 for the first carry look ahead, it goes into this tunnel right here, this tunnel, and it comes out here and is fed into C1, it's fed into C2, and it's fed into C3, C2, yeah, C3. And the same is true for G0. So that G0 tunnel connects over here, we feed it into C1, C2, C3. And then again for our second CLA, we have the same thing going on with uh, P1. Uh, which gets fed directly into C2, and for G1, which ends up going into C2 and C3, and then again for P2 and G2. So that's pretty much all there is to the CLA. Oh, I guess the one thing I didn't mention was uh, the outputs for the carries need to go to the next stage. So for example, this right here is uh, stage one, so our carry in is going into stage one. When we have our carry that is the result of this first stage, which C1 is a result of the first stage, the C1, the new CN, which is C1, needs to go to the next carry look ahead and connects to this CN pin. And then for the second stage, the result of the carry from C2 needs to go to the third stage. And finally, from C3, that third carry, we don't really have it, uh, anywhere to put it, so we just put an output pin right here and call it a day. So those are the, uh, the fundamental points on designing a CLA. Um, the original video was about 12 or 13 minutes, uh, which covered everything for me explaining uh, you know, how it's done, to actually demonstrating how to put equations into the the equation editor, doing the the four 
uh, main subcircuits here, the CLA, C1, C2, C3, and actually wiring up the 3-bit CLA. But as you can see, it's a very simple process. It's very fast, especially when you're using equation editor. All right, go ahead and check out uh, part two of this series. And then finally, in part three, which uh, I should have done relatively soon, I'll uh, demonstrate wiring up the, the finer final part of the ALU, which I have done here. All right.